Hey guys, welcome to class. I've got a fantastic class for us today. We're going to do a good warm up, move into our traditional techniques drill. We're going to work on our sweep and our down thrust. We're going to move into our combat bow drill. We're going to practice striking angles one through eight, get a lot of uh, different footwork practice in. Then we're going to go ahead and cool down, increase our flexibility. It's going to be an awesome class. I want you to give it 100%. Grab your bow, your Joe, whatever it is that you're going to use with me today. Let's go ahead and get started with our warm up, okay? First thing we're going to do is just a single arm figure eight. Grab it with just one arm, your right arm is fine. Right in the center of the staff, all I'm doing is rotating it side to side, flipping my wrist side to side in a figure eight motion. Not only are we getting our body moving a little bit, really loosening up that forearm and that wrist. Yeah, we use that all the time in bow, as you probably already know. There we go, keep it going. You know, it may look kind of funny with my left arm on the inside of my body. I do that mainly uh, so that I can keep this rotation as tight as possible rather than have my arm here and then hitting my arm. Okay, transition to the other hand. Now we're using our left hand or whatever your other hand is regardless. Okay, doesn't have to be super fast, but we're moving. We're loosening up the wrist and the forearm. Getting a little bit of torso twist into it. Don't want to be totally rigid in my body. <clears throat> oh, remember to breathe, right? Since I'm Michael, got to keep that in mind, everyone. Always wanting to breathe. Fill our body with oxygen, with more energy, really, and life force. Okay, next, grab it with both hands and do a two handed figure eight spin. And now all I want you to do is, my legs are a little bit farther apart now, and although I'm keeping the staff in close to my hips, I'm just kind of swaying side to side. Again, loosening up, kind of popping those knees in, popping those ankles in. Doesn't matter if it looks funny, doesn't matter if it feels funny. What you're doing is becoming less rigid and I'm relaxed. Okay, switch. Uh, positional uh, positions of your hands really and go the opposite direction with your two-handed figure eight spin. Let's keep this going. We're almost done. We're going to move on to the next exercise. Okay, nice. Put the staff over your neck, over your shoulders, extend your arms out, legs apart nice and wide. Just kind of shake it out a little bit. What we're going to do is side lunges. Stay with me, lunge to the side, lunge to the other side. Keep your back straight. You should feel this on your thigh and also the inside of your thigh and your glute. There we go. You don't have to stay at the same pace as me, but as long as you're getting reps in, I'd rather you continue to move even if that means you do one lunge every 10 seconds. I'd rather you do that and do good form. Do it correctly. Good. Put the staff in front of you, doing high knees. You wanna raise your staff up? Increase your goal a little bit. Keep it going. Almost done. Stay with me. Time. All right. Next thing, put your staff on the ground, hands on the ground, basically push up position. Our back is straightened. Bring your knee in and bring your leg back out. Knee in, leg back out. Barely dragging your foot on the ground though. Tightening up your core. Plank knee, stay with me, go. It's gonna really good core work out here. Bring in the knee and hold it. Switch, hold it, and continue of uh, rotating both sides. A few more and stop. 
Come back up, downward dog position. Legs are about straight, arms are straight. Taking some deep breaths. Walk the arms out a little bit, drop the hips. It's close to a cobra position. I'm looking up, my chest is out, my hands are on the ground. I'm really stretching out my core right now and even my hip flexors and my lower back. Good. Nice, grab your staff. A couple of uh, more exercises. We're actually going to increase our heart rate some. What I want you to do is we're going to squat down as you pop and we're sort of cling the staff over your shoulders here and back and then we'll do it again. Ready, go. So you pop your back side out as you pop your arms up. Drop down into the squat with the arms out straight. Oh, stay with me. Good. Now, put the staff behind your neck, push it out in front of your body, to your chest. Push it out behind your neck and to your shoulders. Shoulder to chest. Push against your muscles to create some resistance here. It's not purely just a stretch. It can be turned into a toning and strength exercise as well. Good. Last one. Palms up, grabbing the staff in thirds. Switching sides, uppercuts. Go. Doesn't have to be a perfect uppercut, but we're rotating into it. Squeezing the core, squeezing the bicep, rotating the balls of our feet. This is our final exercise. Get our heart rate up. Get really warm, get moving the rest of our class. Got about 10 seconds left. Ah. All right, time. All right, keep moving. You know, if you have to grab a really quick drink of water to do so, but otherwise keep moving, let's move into the next part of our class. Okay, we're gonna move into the first section of our class. We're going to work on two of our important techniques in the green chevron level, sweep and down thrust. Now, even if you already intellectually understand the concept of how to do these movements, it's important that we get muscle memory practice so that your body can do it on command, on demand, without having to think about it, and that you actually integrate all those key points. So that's why we would do these classes. That's why we practice these drills so often, okay? So let's go ahead and move into the sweep, though. Um, to practice the sweep, first of all, let's get in our basic uh, position or our basic fighting stance. You know, legs are apart, knees are bent, right leg is in front right now. I've got my normal traditional hold. Remember, this sweep is a traditional technique. Clearly it could be used for combat, but we're considering it a traditional technique. From here, uh, the first thing I needed to take into account is really what am I doing with a sweep? Am I trying to do a blunt strike with the back side of the tip of the bow? Am I trying to take someone off of their feet and throw them onto the ground. Well, yes, a sweep, whenever it's done properly, the idea is to actually sweep the opponent's legs off of the ground. And if you don't do that, you would at least inflict some damage. It is useful if one leg is already up onto the ground or they're already losing their balance because uh, depending on how heavy your staff is and how much force you really have into your sweep, it may not work if they have a very powerful stance, of course, right? Just things to keep into mind. But when we do the sweep, what we want to first of all do is bring our arms up over our head, or not all the way over our head, but higher than our normal position. So here, bring the staff up, 
Now, next thing we do is take the front tip of the staff, which is the right tip right now, and cross our arms. So it's here. I'm going to get down low so you can actually see this really, really well. For example, it's here. Cross over, cross over, cross over, cross over, cross over, and then you'll move into the sweep. Right? Okay. So stay with me. Right fighting stance, right hand dominant position. Arms come up. Start pushing the left arm forward in order to create rotation. My arms are now crossed and my right tip of the staff will be the sweeping uh, part of the staff. Bring it down low, drop my body center of gravity. Sweeping across, 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 and then uh, recover back to our normal stance. Clearly you wouldn't really recover. If you really did a sweep, you would probably sweep and make contact and then you may move into another strike from there depending on what's happening in the fight if we're talking about a combat situation. Okay, again, arms come up, rotate, lower center of gravity, sweeping across. A couple of key points I haven't noted yet. What is happening with my body, with my feet? with my hips. Take a look, see if you notice a difference. Huge difference, right? When you do a proper sweep, you actually open up the front foot by rotating the foot outward, notice. And I actually pop my hip open in a natural way. As the sweep is coming, as I'm at this point, I begin to open up to make way for this continued circular motion. It's not a rigid step. It's very fluid because the sweep is actually a circular movement. So stay with me, make it a little bit easier from this angle perhaps. Right fighting stance, arms come up, rotate, open the hip, dropping my center of gravity. Stay with me, good. Let's go ahead and switch hands actually. Change over to a left hand dominant position. Switch legs so we can get some work on this side. Good. Arms come up, rotate and cross over. Open the hips, sweep across and around. Okay, now I want you to practice the sweep with me, but here's how we're going to do it. Take a look. As we do the sweep, I want you to actually let go with your, what would be the left hand right now, towards the end of the sweep. Because we want to understand how important the circular motion is in opening up our hip and just letting our body go with the natural momentum of the strike. Stay with me. Go. And notice I'm out really rotating my torso at the end of that. Stay with me. Go. Go. Becoming more circular. Go. More free flowing, more relaxed now in my striking. Go. Now I want you to do the entire motion without even touching with your left hand. Go. Go. This time maintain both hands on the staff the entire time. Go. What difference does it make, right? How does it feel? You can still have that, uh, the relaxed motion, but by having this other hand, it becomes your levering hand, which creates more power into the actual strike, of course. Both hands now, go. Lever it, sweep across while maintaining the open hip. Go. Full speed, go. Good. Change over switch. We're going to start the same progression. This time, starting with both hands, but at the end of the sweep, releasing. Go. Nice. Go. Go. Now only using the left hand. Go. Go. One more time. 
Go. Now using both hands, but maintaining that wide open hip. Go. Right. I naturally put so much more power always when I have both hands in. Go. 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 Very nice. Okay, great job on that. We're going to move on to the next technique, which is our down thrust. So the down thrust technique uh, is clearly used to either striking down to an opponent's uh, leg or their knee or their foot or potentially their face or their neck if they're already on the ground. Uh, so it could be used to a standing opponent or an opponent that's already on the ground. This is a traditional technique. But again, all of our traditional techniques are fighting techniques, but we do them in such a way that are congruent and coherent with the kata that we're doing, which in this uh, chevron is bokata too. Now, practicing the down thrust technique, I like to actually get in a left back stance. Front toes are facing forward, back toes are almost facing uh, 90 degree to the right. Knees are bent. I'm actually holding it in thirds, normal traditional hold, but with the, uh, the left hand is forward, right here. So this is an easy way to practice, but it's clear we're just going to move in to the down thrust from here. So before we do the down thrust, we actually want to create some momentum by bringing our arms up past our shoulder height to really head level. So if I take my right hand where it is now, Boop, beep, beep, boom, right across. That's head level. It's not way past head level because if I do this here, okay, I'm going to get ready, I'm going to do this other side. <laughs> it's a massive telegraph. Um, it takes way too long. It doesn't make any sense. So we do have to get some momentum rather than just this, um, but we don't want to go up too far um, if that makes some level of sense to you. So on our uh, back stance, pulling it up about head level, and then we thrust down and we hit with what would be the tip of the bow in this position. Very nice. Now, what do you think I'm doing wrong here? I don't want to bend over. I don't want to uh, round my shoulders over. The power is not going to come from my upper body. As we say all the time, right? The power comes from your lower body. Usually your lower body is so much stronger than your upper body. So, now take a look at this. All right, so what was the difference? What I'm doing is I bring my arms up. As I'm striking, I rotate my hips to the back, to the back side. I rotate my hips to the back side and I fling my arms downward with control. I'm creating that push-pull motion that we use with our staff all the time, whether it's pulling back and pushing, or you know, pulling back and pulling up, this, this sort of resistance idea because of the way the staff is used, it's very much a blunt force uh, weapon. So we can use the same thing with our body movement. Back stance, arms come up. As you're thrusting downward, rotate your hips back and thrust out. Okay, stay with me. Yes. All right, I'm going to turn around, make it easier. Stay with me. Let's get all of our reps in. Ready? One. Yes. Two. Yes. Three. Yes. We're going to five here. Give it 100%. Four. Yes. Five. Yes. Okay, let's switch. Now my right leg's in front. Right palm is facing now, left palm is facing up. Let's do five reps. Let's practice one first. Arms come up, rotate my hips. Us. Two. Us. Three. Us. Four. Us. Last one. Five. Us. Switch sides again. I'm going to add one thing to this. Um, just as a, a special technique for us to learn. It's not really in our, our syllabus. 
we're going to do a down poke at the end. So if you do a down thrust and you're here and you thrust down, something that you could also add on after that is a down poke. This is a different type of technique, but you're hitting the same target. So let's practice this. Down thrust first. Now you actually keep the left hand in the same position, but loosen up your grip, draw the staff back maybe six inches, and then as you pop uh, downward with the poke, with a lot of intensity, of course, your, your striking hand is the back hand and the left hand is the guiding hand. You rotate your hips back in their normal position. You know, so we use the hip direction again, the other direction. Hip movement the other direction. So it's down thrust, down poke. I'm not going to down thrust and then down poke again like this, this direction. I need to use my push and pull whipping motions to have more effectiveness. Up, down thrust, down poke. And I like to step forward slightly with my front leg to give me that forward moving momentum into the down poke. Again, because maybe we struck down to their, their opponent's face or neck and then we did another poke with a lot of intensity. It's a natural combining uh, technique. Down thrust, down poke. Stay with me. Switch hands. Go slow. Down thrust, down poke. Ready? Go. It's just key to use that as a guiding hand. You relax it and then grip it again. One more. Right, time. Okay, great job on that section. Let's move on to the next section of our class. In this section, we're working on combat bow. Today, we're working on striking angles one through eight. These are the main eight striking angles that you will use in combat bow training. Uh, we are going to use the basic eight strikes today. Uh, but again, the angles are just the angles of attack. You can hit that angle with anything, uh, but the basic eight strikes are the most common, uh, really common sense way to do it. So let's get into our middle guard position. Uh, again, our middle guard position and our normal grip. Now from here, we're talking about one through eight. So we're going to do number one first. Number one is actually, if I'm looking at my opponent straight ahead, number one, remember, that's the quadrant from their shoulder to their head. We're striking down to like their clavicle or their neck. So to do a number one strike, we bring the staff up and then we do a descending strike down. That's angle one. Come up, down. Angle two is getting prepped and hitting the other side down, coming down on the right side of their neck or whatever it may be there. So angle one, coming back up and down would be angle two. So they're descending strikes. Um, so again, that's angle one, looking at my opponent on this side of their body, and then angle two. What I want you to do is when I say go, we're going to do one, two combination. So we're in our middle guard position, which middle guard, the range of motion I have is having the staff at head level to even down to here. So if you're somewhere around here, that is a proper middle guard, okay? We're gonna do one, two, and then get back to our middle guard with a lot of power and intensity. The key thing in this drill is footwork and movement and awareness. I'm in a nice middle guard, I'm relaxed, you don't have to have exact footwork like, like forward, 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 side, side, side. The fact is our, we're on the balls of our feet, we're moving light, we are stepping and sliding, we're realizing which foot is guiding us. You don't have to think about it too much, but just make sure you're moving while we're doing the combos. So when I say go, do one, two with full speed. Go, us, us. Go, us, us. Go! Us! Us! Go! Us! Us! 
Doesn't matter where you're moving, how much space you have in your sp in wherever you're training at right now. Do your very best. Go! Of course, since we're in middle guard, before we do angle one, we do have to bring the staff up to get a proper descending strike. If we were in high guard, we wouldn't have to do that. Go! I'm rotating my whole body into these strikes. My hips, my obliques. Go! And switch. Legs and hands. Middle guard position. On this side, if I say go, you're going to do number two strike and then a number one strike. We're hitting angle two and the angle one. The angles are the same side always. We, we can't flip them because we flipped hands. So we'll be hitting angle two and then angle one with their footwork. Stay with me. Go! Us! Us! Go! Us! Us! Remember, we're striking at our opponent's neck. So we're hitting their neck, but we finish the strike really down low because we want to follow through and break through their neck. Go! Us! Us! Go! Us! Us! Recover to the middle guard. We're prepped. We may have to be doing blocking, counterattacks of other sorts. Go! Us! Us! Go! Us! Us! Go! Us! Us! Time. Switch hands. All right. Take a quick breather there. He should be a little bit out of breath. Or you, you know, make sure we're working hard. We're getting a lot of intensity behind those strikes. We're still in our middle guard. We're going to do three and four. So angle three will be coming across. So if we're looking at our opponent right here, angle three is striking to the left side of their hips, or the left side of their ribs. Angle four is the right side of their ribs. It's the horizontal plane that we're striking with. So number three is like a hook punch, jarring it across. Number four, it's not so much swinging your arms out as it is like throwing a close in hook punch and ripping across with the front tip of the staff. Same idea. When I say three and four, you're gonna do, or when I say go, you're gonna do three and four combo. Go, us, us. Notice my middle guard is a little bit lower now. It's the same position, but I'm in a better uh, plane position for horizontal strikes. Go, us, us. Go, us, us. Ah, you should be feeling a lot in your obliques and your lower back. Don't overdo it. If you're just not starting out, you're not warmed up. Be careful on how much range of motion you're using. Go, us, us. Go, us, us. Every time you come back and do this class again, make sure you go a little bit harder, a little bit more range of motion. Incremental improvement. Go. Us, us. You can do this set class the exact same way a hundred times, or you can do it ten times, and every time you're aware of things you're improving on. Go. Us, us. And the ten classes would be worth more than the hundred. Switch hands. Middle guard position, left side. Now, of course, we're hitting angle four and then angle three. Go. Us, us. Footwork. I may look kind of funny, but I'm just being relaxed, free flowing, fluid, keeping the left leg in front. There would be a lot more variation if I was switching positions and strikes like you would see in a real sparring match. Go, us, us. Angles four and three. Go, us, us. Go, us, us. Good. Switch back. We're in our right middle guard. We're going to do angles five and six. Five is striking the lower quadrant of the left side of the opponent. So we're going to bring the staff down and do an ascending strike. And then on the other side is angle six. Bring the staff down, ascending strike. And then other side is angle six. That's five and six. All right. Don't give up on me. Go. Us. Us. Go. 
us, us. Go, us, us. These classes are designed to get reps in, to get muscle memory in, to train you. You can always review, go, us, us. You can always review the specific technique lessons later on and more of a learning style lesson for yourself. Go, us, us. I want you to work when you're in class with me. Go, us. I don't want you sitting on your couch holding your bow, watching. Go, us, us. Switch legs, switch sides. Left fighting position, middle guard. Okay, so we did five and six. Now we're gonna do six and then five. Go, us, us. I'm targeting it about the knee level, breaking the back side of the kneecap. Go, us, us. Go, us, us. Go, us, us. Go, us, us. Switch legs, switch sides. Final combination we'll be doing is angle seven and eight. Seven, is on, seven and eight are in our vertical plane. So seven is coming straight up to the growing. So we rotate into an uppercut. Eight, bring the hand over, arm over. We strike straight down because angle eight is the top of the head. Seven, eight. I can show those to you on me because they're so basic. Uh, and one side is really. So that's it. Ready? Go. Seven. Step forward. Striking down is eight. Middle guard footwork. Don't get lazy on me at home, guys. Go. Don't uppercut your fan or anything unless you just want to, but don't recommend it. Go. Go. Go, ah, tsa. Switch legs, switch sides. Okay, now we're actually going to do seven again, and then eight, but the left arm leads to the seven. Still in the middle guard, still in a normal grip. I'm not doing a long grip, I'm not doing a reverse grip, not doing an overhand. Go, ha, tsa. Go, ha, tsa. Go, us, ha, tsa. Just one more, guys. Go, us, tsa. Whew, good job. All right, great job on that. We're going to move into our cool down, relax, stretch out, and in class. All right, guys, let's get cooled down. First of all, let's do a breathing exercise. What I want you to do, take your legs apart, holding the staff, palms down. Go down as you take a deep breath in. Same idea, so as you come, bring the staff back down, you breathe out, when you go down, breathe in. So in breath. One more. Okay, great. <clears throat> Legs apart. Put the staff over your shoulder, or over your shoulders, on your neck. Rotate our hips towards one direction. We're doing like a lunge, stretching out the back leg, and also rotating our hips down and hold it. Other direction. Okay. Put your staff down. Just do a simple shoulder stretch. Take your left arm in front of your chest, point it, grab the back of the shoulder, and pull the shoulder, your right hand pulls the left shoulder across. Just 
switch. <clears throat> Pushing down on the uh, elbow. Push down on your left elbow with your right hand. Trying to grab the middle of your back. Stretching out the tricep. Switch. Okay. Whew. Grab your bow. What I want you to do actually is uh, put your palms facing up, excuse me. Palms are up. Turn your hands out. If you can, push into your hips, pop your rear end back, and notice I have a really big rotation. My palms are all the way turned around. Do what you can that feels comfortable, but we're stretching out our wrist and our forearm. Come back out, bring the step behind your neck, and then back with your rotated uh, wrist. Okay, great. Extend your arms out and just try to make sure the staff doesn't fall. You can do this if you'd like. See how I've wrapped my uh, wrist around it. And just pull your arms back some and out. What you're doing is just stretching out your chest, getting some extension on it. You don't have to choke yourself or anything. <laughs> getting some extension on it. Okay. Very nice. Put the staff uh, down. It's fine. Let's go ahead and uh, do our downward dog position. Do this in the warm up. I like to stretch out my legs here, my arms, my shoulders, my back while I'm breathing. Come down, come down, come down. Cobra position again, like we did in the warm-up. Maybe you feel differently now, right? You feel better. You may be really tired, but I guarantee you're going to be feeling better the rest of the day. You got energy flowing through you. Work yourself out, learn some stuff. There's nothing like going to class. Child's pose, so draw back. <clears throat> your, your back is going to be rounded like this. Keep your arms out in front of you. Just relax into the stretch. You know, do your best to get into this position. Once you find your position, your posture, just let all of your muscles, all of your stress and tension, all of the thoughts in your head, really, just release them all. Let them fall by the wayside. They really don't matter right now. Okay, very nice. Well, that cooled me down. I don't know, that worked pretty well. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you all enjoyed the whole class, really. I had a lot of fun, I had a good class today. Just keep in mind, guys, um, eat clean, drink a lot of water. You know, ultimate bow is physical. We're moving our body, we're trying to get stronger, we're trying to increase our flexibility. All of those things add to you being a more proficient, you know, bojitsu martial artist. Um, so yeah, make sure we're eating clean, we're being healthy, uh, so that when you come into class next time, you're just more vibrant, more ready to learn, more ready to give it 100%. All right, guys, and I will see you in the next class.